Well, hey folks, welcome back once again to Photoshop Elements TV. And to everybody that has subscribed so far, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. For those of you who are not subscribed, please click that subscribe button and click that little bell notification. So today we're going to talk to you a little bit about if you can use external storage devices to maintain all of your photos and still use the Photoshop Elements Organizer on your computer. And the answer is absolutely yes, you can do this. Now I use an external storage device called a network attached storage device. So it's basically just a hard drive enclosure that plugs into my network and I get to that network uh, hard drive via an IP address. Now you can also use external hard drives such as USB hard drives, but make sure before you're going to work with those pictures that that USB hard drive is plugged in. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you here how we can actually pull these pictures into our organizer from an external device. So we do our normal file, get photos and videos from files and folders. Okay, so from files and folders, I'm going to pull this up onto the screen here. And right here you can see an IP address. Now that is because that's a network attached storage device. So it's on my network and it's using an IP address. I'm just going to drill down into my pictures folder here. Here's my pictures folder. And the pictures that we're going to work with here today is a uh, train ride that I went on with my, with my wife here a few years ago, a few years back. And uh, it was in Ohio. Here we go. And there we go. So what we're going to do here is pull all these files into our organizer. Get files from subfolders, I'm going to leave that checked. Automatically fix red eyes, do not check that because then it has to examine every single picture to see if there's a person in there with red eye. And most modern day cameras are pretty good and we don't get a whole lot of red eye these days. Automatically suggest photo stacks, that's purely up to you. If you check that, it will examine the photos and if you have two or three sometimes of the same shot, it will stack those photos in the organizer. I leave that unchecked because I want to see all the photos in the organizer themselves. Once we have everything ready to go, all we have to do is hit Get Media. And when you hit Get Media, you're going to see here that it's importing those actual pictures into our organizer. There you go. So the pictures are loading up in the organizer. And again, this was a, a day trip. This was a day train ride here for us. Uh, we just took the car out. My wife uh, set this up for us to go on a train ride. And, uh, it was very interesting. We do like taking these little day trips and uh, finding these little interesting places to go to. Now, you may say, hey, wait a minute there, uh, uh, Jack. Uh, the pictures are taking quite a long time to load. These were shot in camera raw. Now, normally in camera raw, I save that for two main events. One... I do senior, uh, high school senior portraits. I save it for that. I shoot camera raw and I do uh, wedding engagement pictures. Uh, I used to shoot a lot of weddings and I would use raw at weddings also, but I no longer shoot weddings. So we're going to go ahead and let these pictures pull in here. Now I can't tell you on vacations, I normally set my camera to JPEG mode and just shoot in JPEG. Uh, and it does a very good job. It takes up less space and it works very well. Let me just scroll down here and make sure these are all pulling their cells in here. Uh, just let these fill up here. Let me take a couple seconds. And uh, I'll bring you right back. All right, now that we have all the pictures imported into the organizer, you want to catalog these right away. And the reason we want to catalog these is because if you don't, it tends to get away from you and you'll never get your photo organizer organized correctly. So up here you can see that I have top folders. Okay, now we create those by creating here and going add an album category. Okay, let's put one in here just to show you how to do this for holidays. Okay, we shoot a lot of holiday pictures. Okay, you can see now we have one up here for holidays. Now, vacations to me is anything where I go away for, you know, four days to a week. Obviously, this, chain, this train trip I told you was, was a day trip. So I put those under trips. So what we're going to do here now is click on the first picture and hit Command-A or Control-A. Command-A is on a Mac. 
control A would be on your Windows PC. What we're going to want to do now is click on trips, right click, we're going to click on create a new album. And we're going to put in here um, 2018 Ohio train trip. Okay. So they're already in there because we already selected them all. So they're there. And we simply uh, click on OK. And now you can see that we have a album for our train pictures. And there they are. You can always blow these up. You can zoom. Uh, if you can zoom down here if you want to see them a little bigger. Okay. A lot of people don't realize when you're in the organizer, maybe you do. If you right click on a picture, you can edit it with the Photoshop Elements Editor. So it makes it very easy to work with. You can add captions. That's always a nice thing. If you ever need to, you can update all the thumbnails. You can give them ratings. That's a nice way to organize. We'll talk about that in another video. Uh, visibility. You can hide them or show them. You can add persons or people. Uh, if you have people uh, in the picture, and we'll talk about that in another video also. You can double click them. And these will actually make these things bigger. All right, so you can go through here and have a nice look at them. Just like so. That's the inside of the train. It's my wife with the conductor. She wanted a picture with the conductor. All right, we'll go back to grid view. All right, so I hope this little video, and I told you I'm trying to keep these short and to the point. I hope that it helped you out to uh, learn how to pull your pictures in from those external devices. Again, as I said, make sure the external device is assess accessible by your computer. So if it's USB, make sure it's plugged in. If it's a network device, make sure you're attached to it before you start working with these photos. But by all means, you can use another device, save all that room on your hard drive for other important stuff that you do, and don't have your pictures stuck to that internal uh, drive. Plus, that way, honestly, if the computer ever crashes, your pictures are already stored somewhere else. And you don't really have to be too concerned about the computer crashing. So I hope this video helped you. And uh, by all means, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments down below. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future topics, also put those in the comments. And... Remember, until next time, keep your shutters clicking, keep your editors editing, and I'll see you back here soon on Photoshop Elements TV. Bye for now.